amazing series. Welcome to Warm Hatun. I will tell you, I've had many surprises since I came here in the last few days, but probably the best kept secret in Sudan is it has a budding film industry. Now, in a few seconds, we're going to meet Talal Afifi. He's the man who has started the Sudan Film Factory, and it's based in the German Cultural Center. I just can't wait to talk to this man because I frankly didn't expect a film industry in Sudan. How much more one that is started by a man who has a great vision for the future of Sudan. So come, let's meet Talal Afifi and let's hear what the Sudan Film Factory is all about. Enjoy amazing series. I'm your host, Amma, as usual. Come with me and let's meet Talal. As I promised, this is Mr. Talal Afifi. Talal, thank you for joining us. Talal, I, I was very surprised in my travels around Sudan to hear of a growing and vibrant film industry. And I was quite surprised to hear that there's a man who has a great vision for Sudan who is behind this. What brought you into film? Um, at the beginning it was um, a fashion and it was, uh, yeah. as most of the people, I, I just liked watching films and uh, after this, I got to know Hassan Sharif, he's a Sudanese uh, filmmaker uh, in Cairo. And uh, yeah, through him I got to know more and more about cinema and filmmaking and uh, I liked it more. I had the dream to have one day a kind of uh, film school or something like this. I will tell you, in the, the days that I spent here in Hatu, I found the people very welcoming, very hospitable. Just they love the fact that I've come to their country. But I also know that they are also very private people and they don't want people always looking into their private lives. So if you're doing things like documentary where sometimes you're talking about very sensitive things, how do you get people to open up to share their stories with you? Yeah, it's a kind of... Um, it's, a, it's a part of, um, of, of the training. Uh, you, to make a documentary is to... to, to, to get into the story and to get to, into the people and to make relations with people and to live with them and we call it in uh, Arabic and Mu'ayish. You have to be very close to people and then yeah, to begin to, to ask them this private, uh, about their private lives but you have to get very close to them. So do you find people interested in this? Yeah, many people are interested and uh, all, all the times in Sudan people were interested in arts and culture. But the problem is that uh, art and culture ca can't uh, help people to stay alive in Sudan. And it's very difficult in Sudan to make art as a profession um, so, and to get money, to earn money from it. So this is the problem. But um, when we began our courses since uh, two years or more than two years ago, uh, I've, we found that many, many of the youth in Sudan are interested to give a lot of the time to these uh, courses and uh, even to stay for six weeks or seven weeks just making nothing else, uh, only this uh, filmmaking process. Visiting a country like Sudan, my focus is really to highlight that which is beautiful about Sudan and I've seen it. I've seen your beautiful landscape, I've seen the red, the, the blue now, the white now, I've seen your desert areas, I've seen things that really show the beauty, the diverse beauty of Sudan. But I also know that I'm also in a country that is going through a lot of changes. About 12 months ago, you lost half your country. South Sudan was separated from North Sudan. How do you as a filmmaker, what kind of content, what kind of material do you get from this? How do you speak about the changes that's going on in your country to the world and to your people? Yeah, actually we interact with what's going around and um, we as individuals here in the Film Factory, we, are, we, we all are standing with the democracy and we are all standing with the diversity and we are all standing with the freedom of expression in Sudan and in all the world. And we are all with the normal and basic human rights. Uh, before the uh, separation of the Sudan, before one year of the separation, we made uh, a film called Diversity. It was about uh, people calling for having or keeping Sudan united, which didn't happen. 
And uh, after the, the separation, we made a film called Josephine about uh, a girl, a southern Sudanese girl who was living in the north and who had to leave the, the south and the north after, after 25 years of her life. And all her friends are here, and she was born here. And she was in the last, her last um, university uh, studying here. And she just had to leave because she, she is not anymore a citizen of this uh, new country. So we, we, are, we are making films about these changes and we are trying to, yeah, to, to, to be sensitive to what's going on around us and to support um, yeah, this, this, uh, this values about which I talked before. How do you personally feel about the separation? How are you even able to separate your personal feelings from the, the artistic uh, viewing of it? Like, just seeing it as an artist and also how you personally feel. How do you separate it? It's complicated. It's very, very much complicated. Me, as Talal, I, I see it from and feel it also from two points of view. I look to the separation and to, to, to the referendum before as a, a, it's one of the rights the, the people of the southern Sudan have. And if me, Talal, was uh, one of these people, I would choose to go away from this, this Sudan because they uh, have no rights, they are uh, second class citizens and they lost many of their rights since hundreds of years here. Sudan. On the other side, the same person, I have the feeling it's, I'm very sorry to, to, to lose a, a very dear part of my country and to have a new map and to, 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 to need a visa to go to, southern Sudan, to the south of Sudan. I would rather like to have a big united country uh, which is based on human rights and of, on equality and on diversity. What you just said really just touched me because I, I've heard of the, like I, I've spoken to many people about the separation, but then you said to have a new map. Yeah. I, I never thought of it like that way. Like I've thought about it in different ways, but I think of my country, I'm Ghanaian and I, I'm also Canadian. And I think of if I draw my map, I know how to draw it. Yeah. And so to just now redraw my country's map, just it just, just changed my um, view on it. Yeah, yeah that's it. But uh, you know, aside from that, can you also tell me you have um, positive things going on in Sudan? Uh, can you highlight some of the great things going on in Sudan? What's good in Sudan? People are good in Sudan. This is a good thing in Sudan. People are still, um, yeah, like, still, still. You can say that we have good people in Sudan. The community is still has. We have still. Our Essex, our, yeah. this, this is what I can find good in Sudan. Um, the globalization and the um, modernity and the city style still did not affect badly the life in Sudan. So uh, this what is what makes me have hope in the future in Sudan. I try to travel the country, try mm -hmm. to travel the country, and I hope to see even more of the country before I leave. And I've seen, I, I think I was even, mentioned the fact that I've seen a really beautiful country and we were up north in Virginia yesterday and on one hand all I see is flat desert and I think oh my goodness this country is just a plain land flat with just nothing but sand and sand and then when I look to my left there's an oasis with dates and grass and it's growing and there's a, a, a herd of cattle right there and I said, okay, but I think this is just flat land and deserts. Then I look up, I see mountains and the beautiful mountains and rock formations. So it's really a truly diverse country. Yeah. And not just diverse in the landscape, but I think you're also diverse in your people. Mm -hmm. Which leads me to a question. There's a lot of talk about the Arabization of Sudan. How do you view it through your lens? How Sudanese view themselves. Are we Africans? Are we Arabs? How do you, what is, because we're not too sure how to see Sudan anymore. I think this is a, a philosophical 
question. Uh, it's not a real question, a, a daily life question. Sudanese people are Sudanese people. But uh, with politics and everyone wants to be stronger than the other, so people begin to raise these this issues mm -hmm. and uh, to, uh, to bring uh, the issues of we are Arabs, no, we are Africans, and every side tries to, uh, to, 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 yeah, yeah, to, to be stronger with, with this uh, background. But it has no meaning. Sudanese people are very unique people in a very unique place, and they have their own culture. And Sudan exists before the Arab world exists. And Sudan is a part of Africa, and everyone knows this. And a very big part of Sudan is influenced by the Arabic and Islamic culture. So it's, it's nothing, it's just diversity, it's, it's Sudan. What is the future for film industry in Sudan? Do you have a bigger objective? Are you using the film to bring about change, to lead change? Are you, do, do you have, is there an agenda behind your filmmaking? We are uh, yeah, I mean, uh, to make people feel empowered and to make people feel uh, that they have the ability to express them, themselves. This is the real agenda behind it. You want people to feel like they can express themselves. Yeah. That's a very, very big agenda. Yeah. That's a tough thing to do, especially in Sudan. Yeah. 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 You think you can do it? Uh, we we began already. You've begun already, yeah. that's it. Yeah. I hope to see you one day on the Oscars. I hope to be sitting there watching your movie. I, I, I really want to see you. Yeah. And I want to be there clapping for you and cheering you on for winning an Oscar for Sudan and for yourself. Yeah, I hope yeah. so, yeah. Okay, inshallah. Right? inshallah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very Thank much. You. It's been a great Thank meeting you. Yeah. Thank you. Amazing scene.